five. Everybody else that we work with is gone. In gut-wrenching clarity, the true cost of revenge came into focus at Fifth and Robinson. The original ground zero. The Alfred P. Murrow Federal Building, where mothers lost their babies, where rescuers unearthed survivors. Oklahoma City broke wide open when a terrorist truck bomb changed us forever. I remember wondering if I was dead or alive. Well, there were ladies that were right beside me. They didn't make it out. I don't know how to explain it. I really don't. When I was thrown on the floor, I could look up uh, through the the whole building and see clear on the north side, I could see blue sky. So I knew it was horrible. Florence Rogers was sitting at her desk on the third floor, eight of her employees within arm's reach. She'd called a management meeting in her office. They were all together in this office at 9.01. At 9.03, Florence was the only one alive. There was only 18 inches of the floor that for behind me that didn't break away. So they all disappeared. Rogers, the CEO of 24 years, they called her Mother Goose. That was one of our main goals, to be family. One go, one flight, one pattern, flying in the same direction. We are deep in the archives at the Oklahoma City National Memorial Museum. Basement storage for artifacts, documents, and evidence from the trials of the bomber and his accomplice. But they ain't got all the evidence down there because they erased a whole lot of tapes from different angles. They showed different stuff. You know what I'm saying? They uh, downloaded them onto their own tapes and then they erased them off the tapes that they was on. And then they took the tapes with them. Those tapes ain't never been looked at. Like, they looked at it, but they didn't see that in the uh, court trial or none of that. Like, people was mad at the court trial because they didn't even get showed a lot of evidence. That's what they ain't telling you, but you know that's the news, so they got to make it look like they really did something, but in actuality, you know, they covered that up and it was deeper than just those two people, but I digress. It's where this videotape has been buried for two decades. A motion picture scrapbook of the casualties, introduced as evidence against Timothy McVeigh, overruled by the judge. The tape was never played in open court. The voices of the dead, never heard by the jury. But this is part of the story of the Murrah Building bombing, of the ordinary lives of hundreds of people who came here to work every day. Okay, Mom, this is the hallway I walked down. The kind voice behind the lens belongs to Kimberly Burgess. Okay, here's the coffee area. Oh, it's so big. Da -da. Claudine Ritter. There's Claudine, one of our collection people. Was 48 years old. Filming this so my mom can see where I work. Kim's parents lived out of state, so this was to be their personal tour of the credit union. This collections department, I don't think anybody's here, though. Oh, Kathy's here, but she probably won't turn around because she doesn't like to be on video. Oh, I'm sorry, Claudine's here. <laughs> I'm here, too, stupid. <laughs> Kathy Linen was 47. Oh, there's Jill's office. Accountant Jill Randolph was 27 years old. And here's Raymond's. See, we have a nice view of the courthouse. I'm videotaping my work for my mom. Could you open that for me? If you'll take the thing off. Okay. This is where I'm Ah, uh, too late. Hello. Hi. Hi. That's our auditor. I'm the neighborhood auditor. <laughs> Weird auditor. Kim. No, I don't do it. <laughs> yeah, oh, wait, wait, that's not... No, you got to have your pictures done. This is no, Colleen. No, no, She's no, a loan no. officer. Wait, uh, Colleen Housley was 53. And just back here is more loan department. Colleen worked with Jamie Genser, who was 32 years old, Karen Shepard, who was 27, and Robin Huff, who was 37 years old and seven months pregnant. There's Claudette. Hi! Vice President Claudette Meek was 43. This is the teller line. Joe and his name, Jason and Bobby. And Frankie's just dying over here. Frankie Merrill was 23 with a two-year-old at home. Teresa Wharton was 28. Christy Jenkins, 32. All three tellers died near the lobby, along with several customers. One of them was pregnant. And there goes Tony, one of our board of directors. Tony Reyes didn't work at the credit union. He was a board member. He worked at HUD. He died on the eighth floor. He was 55 years old. I'm taping Vicky. We don't allow people to do these things. 
Uh-oh. Vicky Texter ran the visa office. She was 37. And it's on. Okay. Hello. Here I am sitting at my desk working hard. Or hardly working is what I like to call it. And here's our guide. Kimberly asked a friend to shoot this clip at her desk for mom and dad. So, with all my credit union experience over five years, this is what I do all day. The home video is seven minutes long. Beautifully mundane, a priceless snapshot of life inside the credit union on a perfectly average day. Now I'm back in Florence's office. See if I can get a close-up of this picture. There she is with two studs. She likes decks. The recording ends in the boss's office. The irony, inescapable. This is the last place Kim Burgess was alive. 29 years old, an executive assistant to the CEO, she was taking notes for the management team here at 902. For a quarter century, we have mourned this loss, an ocean of tears shed for the 168 in this searing chapter of Oklahoma history. Allie Meyer, Oklahoma's News 4. Now, do you think when those people went to work that day, they thought that somebody was going to blow up that building. They just went to work like normally. We go to work all the time like normally. We go outside like normal. We wake up like normal. We go to the store like normal. Do y'all ever think that a bomb can go off and take your whole life without a moment's notice? Remember, if you ain't getting knowledge, you ain't getting nothing. I do this.